Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're looking at 2D output from a 3D form. Now we're looking at more complex shapes this time. Before in the previous video we looked at a simple orthogonal shape but this time we're looking at non-orthogonal surfaces as well as lofts and cones. So we're going to be taking such thing as a loft and extracting that out as a 2D form. So when we cut that in paper cut or even laser cut or if you're using a CNC machine you'll be able to take that output and bend that back into shape. So this is good for such things as boat building as well when you're creating model boats. And I've proved that this has worked in a previous boat building tutorial where I took those shapes, printed them out on card and actually bent those back and reformed that boat as a physical object with all those pieces fitting into place. So I hope that you find this video useful and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. So we've opened up FreeCAD, we're in the Sketcher and we're gonna create a very simple loft in there. We're first going to go with a surface loft. Now we can do this with solid lofts, but surface loft is far quicker to actually construct and show you the demonstration. So we're going to create a sketch along the XY plane and hit OK. I'm just going to create a number of arcs in here in individual sketches. And we're going to use these to loft through. So we're just doing these all on the same plane. And we're just going to create these sketches, not worrying about where I'm placing them. And we'll do about three. Rather than doing a ruled surface, it will be a flowing loft through those. So we've got those there. And we need to create some space in between here. So we've got this sketch. Let's move this one up, look at the placement, look at the position, and move it along the z-axis. And we'll go about 50 along there. So that's moving it up this way. And we need to move another one as well. Let's move that one and do that 100. So we've got a number of lines in here, a number of curves. To loft through these to create a surface, we're going to come over to the part workbench. Within that workbench, we have lofting tools. So to use those, we can come up to the part and then come down to loft or use the same icon on the toolbar. From there, we need to select the individual profiles in sequence. So starting from the top, working our way down or from the bottom, working our way up to the top. We don't have to press this button here. We can just double click them. And then when we'll click again, you can see them highlighted in green on this side. And what this will do is create a surface loft because we're just using geometry, which is not closed. It's an open sketch. As you can see, it's just one edge with this one. Let's hit OK. That's lofted all through those sketches. I'm just going to select them all, press the space bar so they're hidden. Now, when it comes to something like CNC or laser cut or even paper cut, we may want to take this loft and unwrap it. Then we can cut it and reform it in the real world. So we just add that bend in there. To do that, we're going to come over to a workbench that I don't really talk about much, the mesh design. Within here, we have a number of tools to deal with meshes. And one of the tools, if you come up to meshes, we have this unwrap face here. To use it, we need to select a face and I'll come up to meshes and unwrap face. And what that will do, it will actually unwrap that face into a flat face that can be reformed in the real world. So let's hide that loft and have a look at this face. So you can see here that it's actually been unwrapped. And if we printed this and cut it out on a piece of paper, 
we can get the same curvature there. I've done this before with my boat design tutorial. I've taken the boat, I've unwrapped all the lofts, then recreated it on a piece of card and brought it back together. And you can find that on my channel. Let's have a look at a solid. So we'll go back to the part and we can either create a solid with the sketches. So we're just going to hide all of these in the shape or we could use one of the primitives here. So I'm going to use a cone. I'm not going to bother changing anything with it. We can do if we want to, but we can come straight over to the meshes, mesh design, click on this face, come out to mesh and unwrap face. This may take a little longer than the actual loft. And there we have this face unwrapped. I'll press the space button on that. We've got that face there. That's been unwrapped. With that, we can go say over to the draft workbench and downgrade this to wires. So I can click on that shape that's been created and we go up to modifications and then we've got an upgrade and downgrade. So downgrade converts it to a more simpler part or a simpler shape. Downgrade that, we get wires. So let's convert it to wires. We could actually take that wire, come out to modifications and draft a sketch. And if I hide the wire, we now have got a sketch in there. Double click on the sketch. We can edit the sketch. So we can edit that, add what we want. And let's say, let's add say, just a couple of circles in here for a couple of holes. Therefore, when we come to cut this and wrap this back up, then we can have these holes in here. One way of unwrapping faces that you've probably come across if you looked at some of my other videos is to use the draft workbench and use something called a 2D view. At the moment in front of you, you can see a simple butt joint. Now, one thing that I didn't go over in the previous video regarding unwrapping faces is that if we try to unwrap this in the draft workbench, and place it in the projection that we want to unwrap. And say that I only want to unwrap this face. So what we're doing is just projecting that face ready for laser cut, CNC, etc. If I came up to modifications and shape 2D view, what will happen, this shape will be projected. So it's been projected in a 2D form, but we've still got this top here. We can solve that by coming to the shape 2D view and looking down our list and we'll get to the projection. At the moment it's solid. If we drop this down and place this as individual faces and click off, we now got this face from our projection. Again, we can use that by converting bi-directional between shape and sketch to get our sketch from there. This is the kind of thing that you need to do last of all. So once you've got everything set and you want to do some plans for the actual 2D cut or the 2D drawing of this, then we will do this last. Another tricky problem when creating 2D shapes is that you may have something like this and you want to unwrap these surfaces or project these surfaces. But the trouble is to project them, you need to come round to one of the projections and try to get one of these faces flush with your viewpoint, which is pretty impossible. So what do we do? Because if we try to project this, then it's gonna take a while to get us into the right position to actually project this successfully. We can use the face binder to solve this. So select the face, come up to drafting and come up to face binder. This will create a face binder in here. If I press the space bar on the pad, so this one here, just to show you that face binder, we've still got the same problem. It's not pointed to the right projection, but I can downgrade this. So I can come over by using the downgrade 
or we can change by direction between draft objects and sketch objects here and we create a sketch object so you can see that there so we've got our sketch if we look at the face binder you can see the placement it's got position along the x y and z axis of zero so this is a local coordinate and it's basically an offset from the coordinates that it's been extracted from. With the sketch on the other hand, we've got the placement here and we've got an axis which we can adjust. So we can zero all these out to place them flat along the surface, allowing us to come in and create more face binders. This one here Convert that to a sketch, so draft a sketch from the modifications. I used the toolbar before, and you can see that there. And then we can come in, look at the placement, look at the axis, and start zeroing out this axis. And then it's just a case of hiding all those and moving these sketches. So we could actually move that sketch with the move tool. So there's another way of extracting out those faces if you have something that is not planner to your viewpoint. And we can just extract those out and change the placement and position of where they're going to be. So we see the position here we may want to zero out the Z as well to bring that up at the correct position. So I hope that's given you some ideas and answers some questions of how to extract out faces that are either lofts, orthogonal or non-orthogonal faces and creating 2D output ready for your laser CNC or paper cut allowing for a project to be physically output into the real world. Hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.